we'll get started. The coach will make an opening statement, and then we'll take questions, uh, and we'll get a uh, mic to you to start. Coach? Hey, uh, uh, great day inside of uh, Neyland Stadium. Awesome that uh, anytime you get an opportunity to go in there, just uh, there's only one way, way we, that uh, that we should compete when we walk uh, into that stadium. Uh, uh, proud of, uh, of a lot of the, the things that we did on both sides of the football. Overall, I thought defensively, played with great effort, energy, strain, uh, competed extremely hard, tackled well in space. Um, a lot of really positive things from them. Offensively, uh, showed glimpses of those things, didn't string it together uh, the way that we want to or need to. Uh, but a, a lot of things that we'll be able to learn from here as we, as we move forward. And, and uh, you know, you look at it and we're halfway through training camp here and, and uh, got to keep pushing. So need, uh, need this to be a great afternoon too, just growth as, as we go back and look at the tape. Questions? We'll start with Mike Wilson and then Austin Price. Josh, what is Brian Meyer's status with the team at this point? Why was he absent from practice yesterday? Yeah, I just had an initial conversation with him at, at some point a few days ago as far as uh, the reps and how those things were going to be divided up. Uh, no further update on, on him. Uh, we'll have a conversation with him during the, uh, the off day here. Coach, just breaking in kind of what your thoughts on the quarterbacks were, um, you know, the, the three that were there and just kind of you know, Joe's yeah. first time going through things. How, how did he manage? You know, I, thought, I thought he managed things really well inside of the pocket. Uh, for all, you know, for, for Joe, <coughs> excuse me, and, and Hendon and for Harrison, you know, some of it's tough because you're not in a live situation. Are they going to make the play? Are you going to be able to get out of the pocket? Those types of, of scenarios. But I thought all of them did a great job of, of taking care of the football, were efficient in, in calling it for the most part. Uh, I thought their decision making and, and, you know, what we're doing in the run game and, and controlling the pass game too was, was pretty solid. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think uh, offensively we collectively strung things together the way that we need to. Uh, some of that is just 11 guys all doing their job at a really high level. It's not one position, one guy. Uh, it was a little bit of everything at, at all points in it. Um, uh, you know, through the first seven days, I, I thought all those guys have competed really well and really been sound decision makers. Ben and Adam. Coach, just how would you assess the physicality today and, and you mentioned halfway through fall camp almost just the physicality <coughs> halfway through fall camp and then today in the scrimmage? Yeah, I, I like the, the attitude and mentality that, that our players have stepped on the practice field every single day with, uh, certainly leading up to the, to the scrimmage. I think that's been one of the positives as, as we have gone through camp. Uh, our competitive strain uh, is completely different than it was during the course of, of spring ball, uh, the ability to put back to back days together. Um, I thought today, physicality-wise, just on the sideline, not getting a chance to watch the tape, I, I thought the defensive side of the football was extremely physical, changed and disrupted uh, the offensive uh, front, uh, played on the other line, side of the line of scrimmage. And again, they tackled extremely well. You didn't see many missed tackles during the course of play. Adam Sparks, not me, not to uh, follow up on Brian Mauer. Did he take part in, in the scrimmage of practice today? He did not, no. He did not. And secondly, the, you talked about the, the offensive Things not being stringed together completely. Um, can you see the light at the end of the tunnel there, though? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, at the end of the day, like offensive football, I don't care what tempo you're playing at, you, you got to be efficient, right? And, and that means eleven guys got to do their job. Um, you don't, um, you know, you're going to be on the wrong side <laughs> of it. You know, whether it's a drop ball, uh, whether it's a busted protection, uh, create negative plays. Um, you got to be able to string things together, and, and uh, we've seen that throughout. Uh, training camp. Uh, today you didn't see it consistently at the level that we certainly want it to be, uh, but absolutely feel like our guys are continuing to progress as we've gone through camp. There, there's some really good things out there from today, too. Jimmy and Brent. Uh, a couple of things, Josh. Um, you know, Brent, did you go with the tempo offensively that you wanted to today? Yeah, I mean, Absolutely, uh, at times, right? At, at times we didn't play as efficiently uh, in, in the mechanics of, of playing with tempo, um, but some of that's getting the first first down too. And, and uh, you know, early in uh, in the scrimmage, there were a couple three and outs. But uh, collectively as a whole, um, the way that we operate on the offensive side of the ball, overall pleased with uh, with what we're doing. And for clarification, do you consider Brian Hauer still a part of the team? Uh, I had an initial conversation. I told you I'll give you guys an update here, um, you know, after the off day. Coach, uh, over here with, would you look at this as the head coach at all about offense and, and defense? 
Are you more pleased Special teams too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's, let's talk about the offense the defense part first. Are you more comfortable with the fact that your defense had a good day because this is your offense, it's been so good everywhere you've been? Is, is it more pleasing that your defense was improved today or had a good day or do you look at it? As a coach, I don't think you're ever comfortable and completely satisfied where you're at in any phase of what you're doing. You're constantly trying to push and get better. Um, you know, offensively, uh, there's been days and, and uh, portions of practice where you've strung things together and you, you feel really good about the efficiency and how you're operating and, and 11 guys playing as one. Uh, defensively, they've had those same uh, moments during the course of it. I, I think as a coach, you get uh, concerned when it's one side of the football that is consistently uh, dominating practices or scrimmages. Um, you know, I mean, there's been good uh, back and forth and, and uh, I think our guys on both sides of the line of scrimmage have a much better understanding of what we're doing schematically, fundamentally, technique. Uh, we've continued to progress. Their practice habits have been really good. I think that's what um, brings a sense of, of you know confidence to, to myself, but our coaching staff too. You know, I mean, there's a there's a process that you got to go through. Our kids are, are straining and competing through that. As a follow up to that, real quick, your defense has transferred. This is your first time. Yeah. Seeing yeah, their first time in Neyland, certainly. What's your takeaway? I just think for all those guys, uh, and they blended in uh, immediately. And when I say that, you know, you don't see them consistently out of gap, not being able to, to get a call and get lined up. You don't see uh, issues with communication. They've blended right into what we're doing on all three levels. Um, and, uh, you know, really believe that all those guys are going to have an impact on, on what we're doing. Eric, then Trey. I know you haven't had a chance to check the tape yet, but about the defense, the aggressive, the aggression that was there. Yeah. Did you see anything from the star position, Theo Jackson, uh, Danico Slaughter, anything about those guys? I, I thought those guys, you know, made some plays. Uh, I don't remember a bunch of contested balls down the field uh, that those guys had to, had to make a bunch of plays on, uh, you know, just offhand. Yeah, obviously, we'll go back and watch and, and have a better understanding of that. But I think that position as a whole has been really solid. Uh, they've shown up in, in every practice that, that we've had, our scrimmage situations. Uh, I think they have a unique ability to play uh, physical uh, and be a factor in the run game as, as they become a, a fitter, uh, but they have unique cover skills as well. Josh, can you update the status of K-Ron Calvert and how that works into your offensive line and how you guys are going to start rotating? Yeah, uh, K-Ron did have uh, surgery um, and uh, will not be with us here for an extended period of time right now. Um, you know, I, I think – you know, I've said it before, the, the strength of one position can't just be one guy. Certainly offensive line fits into that. Um, you know, next guy's got to step up and, and take advantage of his opportunity and, and uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, compete and prove that he can play at a championship level. Patrick in Austin. They did. Yeah, they just kind of cycled through. Um, you know, was a guy maybe had a three and out. He might have got an extra drive just to keep the, the play count relatively close. Okay. And uh, kind of following up, what, what is maybe something you've learned about this team through these first two years or even a day that maybe you didn't know going into camp? Yeah, I think I just look back to, uh, to where we started, right? Just our sense of team, uh, sense of uh, competing for the guy, you know, that's sitting next to me in the, in the team room that stands to the next to the left or right in, in, uh, in the locker room. I think there's a, a sense of becoming a team and, and uh, it being bigger than just me. Um, and ultimately, if you're going to have a, a football team that, that plays the right way, it's got to be about the guys around you, not about yourself. For all the talk about you want to throw it around, you, you've always been pretty balanced. You know, yeah. the, the running backs, what do you think of those guys today? And then you talked about you know the, all the offensive side, of you all kind of flashed at times. Were there any particular players that, that flashed? More than others? Yeah, for, for sure. Over over the history of, of my tenure as a, as a coordinator, or you know, the last couple of years as a as a head coach, um, our skill guys have gotten a ton of recognition for what we've done through the air. But for us, it all starts with uh, with what we do in in the run game and uh, operating extremely efficiently and being physical at the point of attack. Um, we've ran the ball extremely successfully through my tenure as well, and and. Uh, I thought our offensive line at times did a really nice job of covering guys up. I don't think we distorted the line of scrimmage the way that we're capable of, um, maybe that we've shown during the course of some of the practices as well. I do like our, our running back groom. Um, I, I think Jabari Small, um, Tyon, uh, those guys are playing at a really high level. Um, 
and uh, excited to see some of the young guys get an opportunity to play. Just watch, look back and, and watch the tape. Jackson Vince. Coach Jay Nichols, Sports Illustrated. You talked about the level of retention in this offense and how they've progressed in the spring. Have you seen any more evidence of that retention just today from the start of camp? Yeah, certainly just in how we, we play ball mechanics, uh, you see that, but also in just in the schemes that we're running, our ability to, to do the right thing, play with better technique. Um, we consistently improved. Uh, you know, where we finished spring ball was completely different than where we started. We got better throughout the course of summer. Day one was better than the end of spring ball. Um, we've gotten better through, through uh, the course of training camp too. Cody Burns had mentioned the number one priority for the wide receiver was to catch the ball. What have you seen today and through camp in terms of them doing that? And anything else say that about that? Coach? I'm glad Cody said that. Um, <laughs> you can do everything else right. It doesn't matter if you don't catch it when it, when it comes to you. Uh, <clears throat> our guys have, have made competitive plays uh, throughout the course of, of, of training camp. Um, you know, Cedric Tillman's a guy that uh, has made a bunch of competitive plays. Uh, Javante starting to get more comfortable in what we're doing, being a new guy. Uh, those 15 practices that he missed in spring, you know, he's just getting his feet in the ground and, and completely understanding what we're doing. His, um, you know, history of, of having played in this league, I think helps him with just the competitive nature of it. You know what I mean? Lining up, getting off man press and those types of things. Uh, we've seen it consistently uh, throughout the course of training camp. Um, you know, I think there's some young guys that got to continue to, to push, climb. And, uh, and make some more of those competitive plays. But that's a huge part of, of playing that position and needs to be a huge part of our success is being able to come down with that 50-50 ball. Josh, could you say what percentage of offense you've installed so far in playing for defense, what percentage has been installed so far? I, we got a huge portion of it uh, on both sides of the line of scrimmage, offense and defensively. I think as you go through the course of the season, you're going to continue to grow and evolve and find ways to, to attack people on the other side of the line of scrimmage as you game plan. Um, you know, there's no set playbook. This is all we do and only what we do. You got to continue to evolve as, as uh, the game changes, as your opponent changes, and uh, you find out more about your, your personnel. I'm sure on offense you're giving everybody reps, but any problems that you saw today on the <coughs> offense, how much do you foresee those being cleaned up once it's just ones and twos playing and you have your game day rotation. Yeah. I feel good about where we're going in the direction uh, on the offense side of the ball. Uh, we got enough playmakers and, and guys are competitive and have a great understanding of what we're doing. Um, it's a growth growth process, but uh, um, they're going to, we'll get where we want to get to. Last two questions, Brent and Ben. Yeah, Coach Kidd, you mentioned a couple of times the physicality of your defense, particularly up front. How far has that group come from maybe where you were at the end of your defense from the end of the spring to where you yeah. are now? First day of pads, <laughs> where we were at last spring to, to where we are now, we it's a different group. Uh, it's different on the practice field, physicality, um, you know, playing upfield, uh, disrupting and changing the line of scrimmage. Uh, most importantly, it's just a different group inside the meeting room. You know, who they are, uh, accountability factor every single day, their consistency, their work habits, their ability to learn, uh, their ability to want to wanna play for the guy next to them and do it right, and, and accountability in that room is, is completely different. And that's why it'll be different on the field, too. First scrimmage for Darnell at left back with the switch C out of Tim, and then with Darnell left with Kate, <coughs> what do you think is kind of that new spot? Yeah, uh, I'm not, you know, I'll get a better chance to see it as you, as you watch the video here this afternoon. I think Darnell is really natural uh, on the left side of it. Um, for him, he's athletic, he's got the ability to bend, um, has a chance to be an elite pass protector uh, as well. And so uh, overall, you feel good about where those two guys are at on, on your edges. Thank you all.